Welcome to 3-Minute Theology. I'm Joel. Um, you know, names are very important uh, in all cultures across all of times. In fact, I really wanted to name all three of my sons Michael Jordan after the greatest basketball player of all time. My wife Britt would have nothing to do with it. But, but, but names are so important. You see, in uh, the Old Testament particularly, the people of Israel they really valued names. They would name their children after a certain possible future or uh, based off of their characteristics and things that they would hope for for their child. This also applied with how the people of Israel related to God. And sometimes you and I, as we're reading through the Bible, we just look at different phrases or different names of God and we kind of just bypass them. But I want to encourage us to slow down a little bit and to pay attention to the nuances of the names of God that we find. And I want to just identify a few of them right now. One is the intimate name of God. And in in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. I had a Hebrew professor once, and um, as we were uh, reading and kind of working through our Hebrew, if we ever came and we're reading outside in class and reading out the Hebrew, if we came to Yahweh, he would actually not allow us to say the Hebrew word Yahweh because it held such dignity, such worth. It was supposed to be held with high esteem and honor. Now, here's a little bit of a pro tip. Inside of your Bibles, whenever you see Lord, in all caps, you can know that this in Hebrew is actually Yahweh, the intimate name of God. When you see Lord with a capital L, but then lowercase, you can know that this is still a name for uh, God. However, it might be a different Hebrew name, like maybe Adonai, right? And so here we have Yahweh, an intimate name of God that was held in high regard and high esteem. It was a name that was associated with the intimate relationship the God had with Israel that was unique amongst all of the other nations. The other phrase that I think uh, shows up all the time that is really important is the phrase Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts. And it shows up in Psalm 46. Now, Lord of hosts is actually a military term. And so in Psalm 46, when uh, the psalmist says, the Lord of hosts is with us, it's actually intended to bring to our mind a incredible warrior king general. Not the type of general who sits safe behind uh, a camp, behind all of his soldiers. No, this is the type of warrior king who is on the front lines, who actually leads his entire army into battle. And so when the psalmist in Psalm 46 says, the Lord of hosts is with us, it's telling us that God is this type of warrior king who won't just sit back and wait for all of us to go into battle. Actually, God leads us. He goes first. And this is exactly what happened with Jesus. Jesus in the incarnation came first and led and conquered sin and death.